Fong is winning, winning is Fong. Chicago Sports Radio 670, the score. We now return live to Moretti's in Edison Park with more of Boars and Bernstein, all thanks to Miller Lite, and only on 670 The Score and 670thescore.com. Fong is winning, winning is Fong. And this portion of Chicago Sports Radio 670 Scores brought to you by AT&T. Nice job, Jason. We were a little worried about you with all the messages you'd been typing in. Well, you still should be because Johnny Rampage, the intern, did the open. Yeah, I'm still drunk. Boy, oh boy. That's good stuff That's there. really good, that's, yeah. That's, well, that's, Johnny Rampage has yep. a little music in his soul, doesn't he? Yeah, that's big time. Nicely done. 312-644-6767. Oh. This one should be fairly simple, though every time I say that, we end up with people who don't quite understand, but... It's simple. We want you just to tell a story about cheating. Maybe you got caught, maybe you didn't. We like to start with an email yes. entry, and this is from Mike, who says... In Rockford. It, it actually is a Mike from Rockford. It's not the same one. I, I'm certain it's not, because this guy's younger. He says, it was senior year, high school... English, and the assignment was to write a poem using a societal issue as inspiration. At this point in my life, two things I couldn't care less about were society and poetry. The night before it was due, lying around my bedroom listening to music, a poem came to me through the speakers of my boombox in the form of an Arrested Development tune, Mr. Wendell, a song about a homeless man. My teacher was in his 70s, and I figured he'd never catch on. The only problem was I had to get up in front of the class and read it. Even after changing Mr. Wendell's name to Mr. Jones and eliminating a few lines, half the class was trying to hold in their laughter. Luckily, the teacher never did get it. I got an A for being insightful and creative. I'm not proud of my plagiaristic past. I'm happy I didn't get caught, but I feel shame. Well, I heard, you know, speaking of plagiaristic past, I heard, uh, I don't know who did the, uh, the, the, the analyst for the Florida State Kentucky game, but talk about spitting somebody kept spitting that it was okay. Every, everybody would have done what those Florida State kids did. Everybody who ever went to school would have done exactly the same thing. Cell phone Dan, you're on Friday. Fung Cheaters Anonymous on the score. Hello. Hello, friend. Hello. Uh, yes, I have a story about cheating, and I'm, 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 I'm actually not too proud of it. What happened was uh, I'm a paramedic, and back in the day when I was going through my EMT course certification, uh, me and a couple of classmates went to a bar after after class one weekend, and uh, to blow off uh, some steam, we had some drinks. Well, uh, one of the girls from the class uh, had a bright idea to play that uh, the one, you know that one, one that one bar game where you throw a cherry in your mouth, you try to uh, tie the stem uh, into a knot with your tongue. Mm-hmm. Well. That was the big game for the moment. And so everyone was trying it, and they were trying really, really hard. One girl goes, oh! So she was, everyone was distracted by it. Everyone turned towards her. She thought she had it, but she didn't have it. Well, I seized that opportunity to spit my cherry out of my mouth, tie it with my bare hands, and throw it back in my mouth. So after a couple of seconds of everyone uh, not being so distracted, I go, oh, oh! I spit it out and say, I got it. Oh, my God, everyone's in and I got a couple of girls' phone numbers from the class for being so talented. Dan, thank you. It's exactly what we're looking for, and I'm so happy that you didn't, uh, it wasn't a story about cheating on some sort of exam to become an EMT. That's what I was, I was worried we were going down that road. Yeah, I, I don't feel very good about it, but I really don't yeah, know anything about I really took the, the CPR body. thing, but I passed it. <laughs> right. I didn't do that and the, uh, any of the stuff with uh, medicine. It's my guy, Dan Lange, checking in. Still bad. Ah, uh, Sprinkler in Peoria, you're on Friday Fung on the score. Hello, friend. Hello, Fred. Oh, Dan, you sound a lot sexier on phone than you do on the radio. Mm, this, uh, my claim to cheating fame goes back a couple of years. Uh, I got a Monopoly NFL edition for Christmas, and uh, we all decided to play. It was about five or six of us, and I was voted the banker. And we go around a couple rounds, and people start buying little properties here and there, and people are asking me for change to break their hundreds and five hundreds, and during that, I start slipping cash onto my uh, account there. Ah, the cheating Monopoly banker, uh-huh. Yeah, and uh, after several more rounds of me getting hotels and everything, someone's going, hey, wow, Johnny, you sure got a lot of cash, and I said, oh, it's because all my properties, and I started acting like the uh, dirty slumlord and Yelling at people to pay up, and they got pretty. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good. Thank you, Brinkler. I never wanted to be the banker at Monopoly. 
Oh, I wanted to be close to it. Why? I might have done the same thing here and there. See, now that I think about it, my cousin Adam was always the banker because he's the guy that... Like, Did he always win? Yes. There's something to be said for always being the banker. Trust me. You should only play Monopoly once a year. It's, it's long. It takes forever to play a full game of Monopoly. And then you end up hating whoever you're playing with anyway because they're probably cheating. <laughs> Not that you're sitting. Oh, I, I cheated at everything and anything. Absolutely. Whatever the really? game was, absolutely. Really? I had a what? mirror. I had a mirror that, uh, like a, a little reflective thing. You couldn't really tell what it was unless you looked at it from a certain angle, and I had it hooked up so that I could see what the other guys were, what, what they had on their board when they were playing Stratego. What's wrong with this? You're not that serious. Stratego? <laughs> <laughs> just once in a while. I didn't use it all the time. Who yeah. does that? Just to mess somebody up, just to mess around with them. That has to be really empowering, too. Oh, it's wonderful. That's gotta be crazy. Are you kidding me? Yeah. It's like the scene from Casino. I know where your fl- I know where your flag is. Break his hand with a hammer. <laughs> but I would I would play it, you know, like I would hit a bomb and I would you know what I mean? I would do oh, it. Yeah, yeah. You had to show that you were yeah. That's right. That I wasn't the genius I appeared to be. Ryan in Milwaukee, you're on Cheaters Anonymous Friday Fung on the score. Uh, Father of Boris and Bernstein, forgive me for I have sinned. Who cares? <laughs> Last summer, I coached AAU basketball in New York City, and last summer we took a group of our kids uh, to a Red Sox game, and we're walking around the concourse, and uh, we happened to be standing there, and there was a tour guide giving um, a group of underprivileged youth um, a tour within the bowels of the stadium into the clubhouse, etc. prior to the game. Um, so I quietly led our group to the pack of it, and we kind of made our way through there uh, with that group and that process we um, were identified and sent to our seats and in the midst of during the game a young man in front of us uh, took one of the balls from one of our nine-year-olds a follow ball later in the game in the seventh inning big poppy came up and hit a screamer hit the guy square in the teeth knocked his teeth out and in the course of um, the paramedics arriving and applying pressure I slipped the ball into my pocket well, that's and not cheating. You're that's, a gutsy, But thank you. That's not exactly cheating. I think one thing that, that um, we, we, we run into this problem every so often. Where people don't get it? Well, not, yeah, a little bit of don't get it and a, and a lot of, you know, filibustering. I mean, we... we tell we, the story. <laughs> yeah, tell the story. Right. <laughs> I, I think the message here is get to the point. Oh, right. Jason's got it out now. It, it, it's all cleaned and ready to go. Fung is winning. Winning is Fung. That's what we're doing. Carphone, Eddie, you're on the score. Hey, buddy. Hey. Um, this one's a little bit about golf. We, uh, we're at our golf course, and every golf course has got a guy that just shoots it off, and this guy wanted to play me, so his name was Larry, and we go out there, and I'm just getting totally whooped in a skins game, and I'm thinking to myself, i got to do something. You know, I can't lose this guy. I'll never hear the end of it. Lynch him in the back and, alley. Yeah, and uh, we, our golf course is bordered by train tracks, and, you know, midway through our little game, I see a train coming, and they're not supposed to blow their horns, and uh, Larry's over about a five-foot putt, and it was worth about 100 bucks at the time if he makes it, and I'm waving this engineer down, you know, come on, just look at me, and he looks right at me, and right in his backstroke, I just told, I'm just giving him the horn blow signal, and he blew it, and Larry missed the putt, and I went on to whoop him in the match, so it was uh, pretty gratifying. Why do you think you is a pinout for so many gay lords? <laughs> no, I don't think that's cheating. I don't think so either. I think that that's just... I think that's playing the course. I think so, too. I think that's part of playing the environment. I've actually played on a golf course boarded by a borders. Did you yeah, know I, only, that? I only caught the the second part of that call. No, Did I don't think that's cheating. Over a putt. What happened? Yeah, he had the he had the uh, engineer toot the whistle, blow the whistle during a putt. Yeah, I don't know that's that. Cheating. But, it's, but it's, I admire how that he was able to successfully do that, or that the engineer. Oh, they'll was do it if you. Oh, yeah, like, they'll do it. They like to do it. It's like truck drivers when you, yeah. when you tell them to honk the horn. This one was was just handed to me. Schmutzy's writing on napkins. The maha. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and, he, and he writes, for seven years I played center for both my grade school and high school football teams. I'd guess that by lifting the ball pre-snap and resetting it on the ground roughly three to four inches forward on practically every play, I gained an illegal 30 yards for my team. I got flagged twice, and that's included in my yardage estimate. I played center? Were you at Royds? You were the world's smallest center. Get your facts straight. <laughs> James in Albany Park, <laughs> high school football. You're on the score. Little people. Hey, gentlemen, how you doing? Hello, friend. Hello. Uh, this goes back to my sophomore year at Mount Carmel High School. I did not study for a vocabulary exam. I wanted to keep my A average in English going, so I proceeded to place the vocabulary book in my lap. Well, lo and behold, the teacher starts to walk around and snuck up behind me, hit me on the back of my head with his book that he was proctoring the exam with. My head bounced off the desk, left a very large welt on my head, and Mr. Bolt meet my exam. There you have it. Wow, and you can't sue him because the teachers there are allowed to do that, right? They're, they're allowed to hit you in the back of the head with books? I think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I think so. I don't think or do you have so. to? Or do you have to be a nun? I think a nun is allowed to do anything they want to you. Yeah, but getting hit in the back of the head with a book, no one can do that, right? You can get a paddling, right? But back of the head with a book? Why well, had teachers who had paddles? That's a paddling. Paddling a canoe. That's different. Man, I don't want the paddle went out of the classroom, but it's really too bad. I'm school. I actually had my my junior high science teacher hit me in the forehead with a metal yardstick. I want a new yardstick. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was the hit in the seat. That came later. <laughs> yeah, but you can't sue him over that if you're there asking for it. That's, that's the way I looked at it. By the way, Matt Abaticola will be hosting the second qualifying round for the 2008 Scorehead of the Year from All Night Auto, located at 989 South Eola Road in Aurora from 1 p.m. until 3 p.m. on that ain't true! Saturday, it is January true. 12th. You can register to win an oil change or an auto detail package nice yeah nice oh and tonight matt's going to be at ozzy's sports grill in niles (laughs) bet on it car phone mark you're on the score hello friend hello friend my junior and senior year of high school i was a pothead drunk burnout and proceeded to fail a half a year of junior english class so in order to graduate with my class I had to take a half a year of two Englishes, and one of the English classes was independent reading, which consisted of reading four books and doing detailed book reports uh, for two quarters, which was eight books. Well, considering that reading was going to interrupt my partying schedule, I decided to do book reports on books that were made into movies. Decided to get drunk, drop acid, smoke pot, whatever, go to the movies, see The Shining, Catch-22 was rented on video, and do the book reports. I proceeded to graduate with four Ds and one A in independent reading. And <laughs> a beef wasn't dropping acid. I just, I love, I love the statement, I had to take two Englishes. <laughs> It's not quite as good as the appetizer suppressant, but that's good. When does how does one if you're really that much of a punk pothead burnout? Yeah, how do you emerge from that? Like, how do you really make the decision? Well, I like, was going to ask him that. Like, you know, how do you make the decision? I mean, look, I was going to ask him that question when he's done. See, I mean, it's not like <laughs> you I, apply for a job at the score. Well, right? I, have to, I have to be. I have to be <laughs> somewhat. Works. I have to be somewhat careful here, but I'm, I'm drawing the line between someone who may use drugs extensively, and one who's really a legitimate punk pothead burnout. Well, that's what he called himself. That, our word's his. Because those people usually end up in a drum circle in Vermont or, or waiting in line for tickets to Bonnaroo. Or married in New Hampshire. Well, ask him. Wait, wait, is he still there? No, I don't think so. I just, I, that, I'm, I'm curious. How well, that's why I wanted to ask him, but he was dismissed. You just wake up one day and say, I don't want to do this anymore. There you go. Yeah, I don't know how you could drop too much acid, because that, that would just... <sighs> They run for really president. Look, I think if, if I was better at it, I would have done more of it, but I wasn't very good at it. Doing and being, drugs? And being a druggie? No, cheating. Oh, oh, oh. And being a druggie. I thought you meant like dropping acid. No, How no. How are you that not was, Terry would just it. put it in his hand. That's what it was. Blotter paper in his ear. Is this yeah. right? No. No, you're well, You know, I never had time, but I was married I'm not when I was feeling 12. the effects of this. That's because it's on top of your head. I have an erection. <laughs> well, that didn't happen either until I was 18. <laughs> And even then, it was unwanted yeah. and frightening. Ed, yeah, well, hell. What the hell. And it was in a locker room. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Stephen Deerfield, you're on the score. Uh, hello, friend. Hello, friend. Fung is winning. Winning is Fung. Uh, this would qualify me, I think, as one of the worst people on earth, but I was at the casino playing in a poker room. I just sat down at a table, and the person to my right, I noticed his cards, he wasn't hiding them very well, and I was able to see just about every time what hand he had. Uh, we were in a hand, five or six hands into me sitting down. I noticed that this kid went all in. Uh, his cards, he was kind of shaking, and I could see what he had, and I knew I was beating him, even though I didn't have that great of a hand. So I call him. I win, he gets busted, and he gets up. The thing is, he kind of was walking kind of funny. And I looked around, and other people at the table knew him, and were like, yeah, he's got cerebral palsy. I was like, oh, Jesus. I just, I totally cheated off of the kid who had cerebral palsy. So. That's our winner. I think that's actually noble in a way. I don't know which hey, way I'll think about it. I, I, I gotta tell you this, I, I, at the risk of sounding insensitive, you're at that table, the rules apply to you. Cover your cards. And, and, and no, I'm serious. I was and, gonna ask him, no, like, who I'm, is he playing against? Michael serious. J. Fox. And, and if you have, if, if you, if you have, <laughs> if you have, it's meeting with some no, disapproval. No, Don't let your drool come spill all over your the... cards. And, and the rules are the rules. And if you have any kind of condition that prevents you from doing so, you shouldn't be there. So you're saying handicapped people shouldn't have fun? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, I'm saying, if you have a problem covering your cards, you incur that risk, regardless of what the reason is. If oh, you're, you're a bad guy. You no, know I, I, look at a casino. There's no, there, 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 there's. <laughs> That's not the place for that kind of sensitivity. That's not the place for that. You're you're allowed to play, but you incur that risk. That's on you. Wow. Oh man. And I'm mean, yeah, and I'm Mr. Insensitive, huh? I'm not being insensitive. That's 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 the rule of a no, casino. No, you're insensitive. What are the guys the moments where you know you you that, is the, that is the rule of a ca- no. That is there's there's no room for that. You can't start making value judgments over who's entitled well, to bend and, uh, the rules and well, well, maybe he went there to you, lose. It is, it is your it is your job to keep other I do. people from seeing your cards. And so you do can, you call the guy with one hand for double dribbling? I'm not quite sure how to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> He's in a casino. <laughs> Wolf in Atlanta. You're on WSCR. <laughs> Cheaters Anonymous on Friday <laughs> Fung. Harry, you were in my dream. You were my partner in crime, but back to the basics. <laughs> I cheat in pool. I cheat in pool. How? It, I don't know how I do it, but I, I put one of my balls in, usually to a game, and I've done it in front of ten of my friends. No one has seen it ever. <laughs> you just actually, by hand, like knock it into the pocket? Oh, yeah, just wait for a distraction, baby. I was, Wolf, I wasn't in a dream when you were, like, switching balls around, was I? Uh, no, we, we actually had Ace Hardware, and you were a really bad driver trying to pull in. Well, that's possible. <laughs> I don't think I was in a dream. <laughs> <laughs> we both went and got hammered. All right, thank you for the call, hey. Wolf. I, hey, hey. No, that's right. I don't steal his bits. Comedy bits. <sighs> I'm still working on the poor guy with cerebral palsy that you, you know. Cover your cards, Cover you little cards. twit. Let's go. Come on. That. I say he, he's. Uh, Do you even ask for him to get you know, like escorted no, out of the no, casino? No, 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 no. That's that's inherently wrong. You could, you know, actually, you could not look. So, are you saying it's okay to cheat off of him? I mean, I don't think it's cheating. It's one thing if uh, that technically that's not cheating. If, if you if, look at another guy's if, cards, if you are at a table and the guy is making his cards visible, that's not cheating. I don't think. I don't really know. I... Never mind the fact he's he has cerebral palsy. No, but I no, but I thought <laughs> my, I thought in general it is your responsibility. We've ignored it to this point. It Why is, stop I, now? I thought it was your responsibility as a player. Well, to, it is. It, There's no doubt about it. It okay. is your responsibility to keep your cards covered. Okay, that's what I thought. I mean, I, I could be wrong. It just no, that's, that's right. I'm trying to be fair. That's true. Mark in Western Springs. You're on Friday. Has no hands on the or score. feet. Love you, show. There's a variant of poker where every player puts a card on his head, and you bake your bet based on what every other player has, and you can't see your own. Yes. Was playing that with my friends one day in the dining room of this guy's house, drinking beer, look up and see the uh, reflection of myself in the card on my head in his hutch. Well, in between drinking beers, fits of the church giggles, I proceeded to collect about fifty dollars from my friends in nickel poker. I think that's okay. How many hands of that can you play? I understand if you're moving the dealer out of the dealer calls the game, but usually you play one round of Indian poker for a novelty and then that's it. I am convinced Chicago is the home of the retarded. <laughs> 
it. You get a little argument after this. I think that's okay, though. If there's if there's something on the field that's helping you, I think that's okay. Right. He didn't plant it there. No, he didn't put, he didn't put it put there. The hutch there or the star seed. See, every time something like that has come up in a game I've played or something, I've always told the person, hey, this is what's happening. I'm going to beat you anyway, but I don't want to beat you like this. These people have no conscience. None. Especially you, Bernstein. <laughs> Wow. Out Terry's the guy that said he cheats at everything. Well, I can understand that. Well, no, that's, that, 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 no, that's no, the kind no, of man no, Terry no, no, is. No. That was know? as a kid. It was a kid. Not anymore, right, Terry? Right. Absolutely not. Tim, who I believe is in Elmhurst, but my screen says Elmhurts. <laughs> Tim's Elmhurts, but he's on the score, right, Tim? Man, my elm does hurt every once in a while. <laughs> well, we got um, just a doctor for that, to look into that for you. Big sack. <laughs> Dr. Tom, Dr. Tom Rasmussen. Oh, <laughs> uh, when I, I do, uh, I've been testing for fire department jobs, and one of the parts for the uh, physical is a flex arm hang off an extension ladder, and you got to hang there for, for uh, 30 seconds. Well, one time I was doing it on this extension ladder, my knees just happened to fit nicely into between the rungs. I really didn't have to test my arm strength, and I held on there for about a minute until I'm like, okay, I'm tired, and I got off. Well, what time I was doing it, I was okay, I, I, hope that, I hope your arm strength isn't tested when there's, like, actual fire then. <laughs> he just pulls up to it. No, nope, I'm not doing that at all. There is a purpose to the test. I mean, oh, my God. I would think one time you're hanging, like, above a burning floor, and you're hoping you're going to hang on until they come get you. I'd be like, oh, you know, I probably should have worked on it. Arm strength. <laughs> Instead of beating the guy with cerebral palsy at the card table. <laughs> oh, God. Rob in Milwaukee, you're on Cheaters Anonymous Friday Funk on the score. All right, love you guys. Birthday suit. Oh yes! <laughs> you guys, this this is a jury duty story here. I was in jury duty, right? I was sequestered. So as I got into my hotel room, I noticed that there was a TV there. Obviously, in jury duty sequestered, you can't watch TV. So as I went to look at the TV and say, "Hey, I can plug this up and watch it," but as I noticed, the prongs on the on the plugs was tied with tape with ta- with ties. So I couldn't plug it up. So what I did is I got a lamp. I plugged the lamp in real, just barely. Then I put the TV prongs between the two lamps. I had TV all night. You moron. You killed yourself. <laughs> Were you on the Dahmer trial? That, that sounds and then like the, the hotel way, caught fire. That sounds like the way Les Grobstein used to wire up his his overnights. On the, and his you know, pants. We got it remote. <laughs> He'd like get the coffee maker out of the room and pull the wires out of it. Alligator clips connected to his nostrils were on the air. You, know? you stink. You smell like beef and cheese. You don't smell like Xana. <laughs> oh, boy. Thank you for the call. <laughs> we'll continue, though. I'm enjoying it. Well, good. In an odd sort of way. Well, good. Well, we'll take a brief break, and we'll come back, and we'll do more Cheaters Anonymous for Friday Fun on WSCR, Boards and Bernstein on the score. I know that you guys, on a daily basis, try to make sense out of idiot people. And this hour of Chicago Sports Radio, 670 Scores, brought to you by our friends at AT&T. Taking some more of your phone calls <laughs> for Cheaters Anonymous, Friday Fun on the score. Optimus Prime is next on WSCR. Hey, buddy. Hey. Hey, so I was in high school. In high school, you have to get so many math credit, and I had failed algebra twice because I had a teacher that literally hated my gut. Hey, no, buddy. You're an idiot. So that, too. Well, so I ended up, after, like, I graduated, technically, I had to take summer school algebra. So I'm in a class, and I'm doing great, and the teacher puts a bonus question up that we have to, you know, solve, and it's a take-home question. Well, I could not figure this out. It was worth 50 bonus points. So I go to my buddy, who was like the equivalent of Will Hunting. He gets out. He figures it out. He hands it to me. I get up on the board. I, you know, I get back to class. I, I do the problem. And the teacher looks at it, and I had a different answer than any, all the other kids. And the teacher looks at it and realizes my buddy, well, he thought I had done this. I had taken Wow. Any guy that has a take-home algebra question, you, yeah. you can't cheat at anything. You're just dumb. <laughs> Jason has ruled. Sorry, Optimus Prime. I love Optimus, now he's a CPA. Yep. Come on. 
Jeff in Janesville. Welcome to WSCR The Score. Be warned, though. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, this uh, cheating goes back a few years at a brother's bachelor party. Uh, we stopped by a gentleman's club and took our positions up near the stage. Well, they had, had a little ledge there, so we couldn't spill drinks under the floor. Um, well, we, what I did is took some dollar bills, and I tore them in half and was folding them up. And as uh, entertainment would come nearby, we'd uh, tip for them. Were you in a gentleman's club or a Harlem Globetrotters game? What the hell are you doing? What are you talking about? Do you have a, bu- you have a bucket full of paper, too? What the hell? What's, what the, the, the G-strings what? had a big rubber band. <laughs> Putting dollar bills on a yo-yo. Say hello to now. Head it out on the floor. Give it up for Red Clots. <laughs> My guy. I love red clots. Curly Neal's and Lombard. <laughs> Are you tired of the nagging, the cold shoulder, and the singles wears Harlem Globe dress? <laughs> wow. Oh, that's great. John Downtown, you're on the score. Hello? Hello? Hey, what's going on, guys? Ah, uh, shut up. <laughs> I've got a cheating story. This happened like about a month ago. I went to one of uh, an establishment in Chicago that has like poker after hours. Polka? And, <laughs> poker after hours. <laughs> and I asked the owner, I was like, is there any games going on? He's like, you don't want to sit at this table. These guys have been playing forever, and they pretty much don't know what they're doing. So I sat at the table. Every time it was my deal, I would give myself like, a full house, a four of a kind. These guys were none to the wide I ended up walking out with over a thousand dollars in my pocket. Ah, uh, shut up! After hours of polka. polka. <laughs> That's what buddy said. You may have thought your evening of polka. I'm, I'm had not ended. really sure that <laughs> taking know, again, shots of cheddar. <laughs> well, he seems to be fine, but I'm not really sure. Like an after hours poker game is the place to cheat. I, I'm right. not really sure, sure that's right. a great idea. <laughs> Everyone has Could to check be their me. gun at or the door. Or polka, either one. <laughs> I don't want her. You can have her. She's, She's too fat, fat for me. me. Hey! <laughs> it sucks. It sucks. No, it does not suck. No, no more than it does any other day. No, it's good. Yeah, it's but actually, that, that's, that's a good point. That usually, you know, you get caught cheating in the, the old after-hours illegal poker oh. room is when a guy tends to cap your ass. <laughs> Bobby, that's how, that's how they fill we're out not the talking about re- using a gun. Right. That's how they fill out the police report. <laughs> right. How'd he die? He got his ass capped. His ass was just capped, you know? What what is Kulo? Doctor. <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> Bob and Barry need a B12 shot. Hey, <laughs> boys. You guys sound like you're finishing off the holiday mag from the score Christmas party. Ah, uh, shut up. <laughs> hey, uh, mine goes back a long time to when Terry and I were still wearing knee-high shorts there. Next. Back in the late 70s when uh, people still owned 45 records. Uh, ah, and shut I would up. sit around and uh, see who was the best that named that tune. So we designated someone to be the, uh, the, the designated disc jockey who didn't know anything about music. So I went through 345, memorized the names of the artists, the label, and the, and, and the first couple notes. I put them back in the box. I put dust all over it. I put it up in the garage. Everybody came over. I told them where they were. They came down, and, of course, I beat everybody's butt. That's just studying. That's, yeah, I don't know that that's cheating, is it? That's, that's just a lot of work. Why is he putting PCP all over his records? He didn't say angel dust. He said a lot of dust. Oh. I think. Were there 45s still in the late 70s? Sure. Yeah, I had 45s yes. when I yeah, was a I, kid. I had 45s. We used to get them as like party favors from yeah, birthday I had the Super Bowl, Super Bowl Shuffle. Play the Super Bowl <laughs> Shuffle. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, I, I, had, I, had, I had Ayatollah. I had a great collection. I gave them away. I was, I'm was i an idiot. They would have been worth a fortune. What, what was the next 60 stuff. Here? Everything. Originals? Like Beatle. Oh, really? Beatles, Beach Boys, yes. All of it. Wow. I don't know what they're worth, but they would have been worth more than nothing. I'm an idiot. Don't remind me of that. Don't call. No, it's fine. But I don't think that's cheating. I think that's just wisdom. Carl on a car phone is on Friday. Fung Cheaters Anonymous on the score. Maha. <laughs> Hey, uh, don't get mad, but uh, I understand that the score's policy is to win prizes is one for every 90 days. Not me, though. When you use your friends' names and addresses, you could get a lot more. (laughs) 
I got another can cozy. <laughs> exactly. Sweet. Who wants a keychain? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, though, over the years, our can cozy houses have evolved into something else. The ma. <laughs> We'll give you a doctor comes by. Oh, not, I, not uh, Tom Rasmussen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? I hope Dr. Tom Rasmussen calls back, don't you? He had a little Pearsall in him, too. He had a little bit of, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, well that's... <laughs> Sounded like a doctor. He did. He, he knew all the words, but he might have studied them. In Bolingbroke, it's the great Santini on the score. Hey, guys. Great. How are you guys? Who cares? <laughs> Hey, uh, my eight-year-old, like uh, many kids these days, spends a lot of time in the video uh, machines downstairs, and he uh, invited me down to play Madden one day. And uh, he took me for about 20 bucks in advances on his allowance, and uh, I couldn't let it stand. So the next weekend, I got a bunch of cheat codes off of the Internet, went down and beat him like a red-headed stepchild and sent him upstairs crying to mom. That's How old is man. he? <laughs> he said eight. I think he eight? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. That's a good man right there. Yeah. Well, we'll get him a card game with a guy with cerebral palsy. Good <laughs> God. Okay. <laughs> man, oh, man. You get, they just take it. They, you just take it. Yeah, they're allowed to be better than you at things like that. Of course they are. No, because then they think they can just punch you in your sleep. You know what I mean? You can't, you, it's certain times that you got to let the kid know that he doesn't run this. <laughs> No, you got to beat kids at everything. They can just punch you in your no, that, that is a that's a, a classic symptom of type A personality or or other hyper aggressive disorders is needing to defeat children. At no, times. no. When I play kids at things, I have to beat them because they're gonna have to learn how to lose sooner or later. Right. Oh, Nancy. <laughs> Jeff. In but, but he took offense yeah, at the yeah, cerebral you, palsy right, guy. Right, exactly. Took, uh, enormous taking, offense at that. But right. you're taking beating a ball children, bat. absolutely. <laughs> right. You're kneecapping guys with cerebral palsy, but I can't beat a kid in a video game. <laughs> I just think you play by the rules, especially at a casino. It's one thing if it's your friend and you're at somebody's house. You're at a casino. You abide by the rules. And if something prevents you from abiding by the rules, you incur the risk. That's it. <laughs> Six forty-four. <laughs> if the guy with cerebral palsy can't do it, he's got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff and Polo, you're on the score. Yeah, this goes back to high school. I took Spanish 1, 2, and 3, and on all the uh, semester exams, I got Ds or Fs, but I managed to sneak by because every day we would have a test of palabras, which is vocab words, and I would write them down with my pencil, and every day I would get nine or eight or nine out of ten correct, and uh, my teacher never figured out how I could sneak by, and uh, the ironic part is I was in the Marines, married a Mexican, now I'm bilingual. <laughs> what the hell is going on? The ironic... He was married to a Mexican, and now he's bisexual? No. What did he say? <laughs> oh, he's, he's bilingual. What did he say? Oh, bilingual. Yes. Married, teach, married. Oh, man. So, wait, so the... to... Oh, okay, I get it. I, I, I was Boy. with him right to the three years of Spanish. I was with him on that. Okay, so he, he did his palabras, but so but now he's bilingual. I thought back, is he saying that back then he was bilingual and that's why he was able to do so well? No. Oh, but now he's bilingual. Now he's bilingual. But it, Okay, but he married a Mexican and now he's bilingual, but right. we're not assuming that the other language he speaks is Spanish. It was Andy Garcia's husband just now. No, but that would, it's, it, it's possible he could marry a Mexican and then learn French. I don't know if it's practical, but it's possible. Steve in Orland Park, you will be our, our last entrant to oh. Friday Fung on the score. Okay, mine goes back to kindergarten. We were playing a game of heads up, seven up, and I was the guy walking up down, you know, pushing people's thumbs down. And then when, when it came time for everyone to guess who put their thumb down, um, when they'd look over me to do the head nod, to the head next to me, it was this guy, it was this guy, and really it was me who pushed their head down, so I cheated in kindergarten. <laughs> Your father, Steve. Last time I saw a guy put it, push his head down, he's doing time in Boston. But thanks for the call. And um, what do you make of all that, by the way? You have a final thought? No. Do you? No. I, I'm still. I still like the the, the after hours polka room. <laughs> the idea that there's there's something just there's something subversive. But you th you think you're gonna shut down our polka? You think you're gonna end it at ten o'clock? No, no, no. You can close this polka hall. But we're wow. headed elsewhere. We're headed out. <laughs> <laughs> this town All right, thanks, rock. everybody. We appreciate that. Nicely done. Yep.
Nicely done. That was Friday Fung. It was Peter's Anonymous, and it was on WSCR, The Score.